it's so critical. That's one of the things that I think a lot of writers struggle with is asking for notes and then they, and receiving them. That's a real difficult thing for a lot of writers is to take the note in because you you send it out. Let's be honest. You send it out to competitions expecting to win or hoping to win. Yeah. You send it out for feedback to get somebody to tell us how great it is. That's generally what we're doing. But the reality is, is that that's not what you're paying for. You're paying to get somebody to tell you how to make it better, to make your vision clearer. And if you're not willing to hear that, you're not willing to listen to the, that advice from somebody from a reputable company, it's not, it's not, oh, they don't know, they don't know what they're talking about. That was a waste of money. It's a scam or whatever. No, it's to help you improve because we all on this call all know this and probably everybody listening, most people listening, it's a hard business to break into. It's really difficult and it's tightened up this year more so than ever. So what can you do to make yourself stand out? Utilize resources to help you get, it doesn't have to be the ISA. It could be a group of, uh, in a writer's group where you're swapping scripts and you're at least taking steps. If you're on a budget, all that sort of thing, but get notes and then listen to them. And then, cause they always sting at first step away from them, you know, let them sink in, come back. They sting a little less the second time, the third time. But the more you kind of like contemplate them, you know, walk, take a long walk and meditate on it. Like, what do they mean by that? Like, try to get to the to the root of it and see if there is a way to apply the note, but trusting your instincts too, right? Because resisting notes is a bad idea. Not trusting your instincts on notes that may be just, you know, spaghetti at the wall. You don't want to just try to please everybody. So there's a balance between all that. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, I, I always, I always kind of say with notes. Sorry, Scott. Just to, the thing I say about notes is, um, for me personally, I know what I'm trying to do with my notes. If I give someone notes, is I'm trying to see if what you wanted to put on the page is what I got from it. So because you have obviously had have an idea that you, what a story you wanted to tell, a way you wanted to tell it, characters you wanted to share with the world, and I'm trying to tell you. I'm giving you my feedback of what I got from reading it. And then in the middle of that gap, it might be brilliant. I might be getting exactly what you wanted. But in that gap is where we are trying to kind of, I'm trying to tell you what I've got. And you're, and you're going, well, I actually wanted you to feel this. So then how can you, what can you manipulate? What can you move? How can you think about the story in a different way so that I, the next person who reads it, and this might take three or four drafts, let's be honest, but they'll actually understand what you wanted to put on the page and you will succeed in getting that across. I can hear myself going back. Can anyone else hear that? A little bit, but you're okay. okay. Yeah, we, we still got the message, and, and I think you were about to say that you were felt like the luckiest man on the face of the earth. <laughs> I don't know. Does Felicity know the Lou Gehrig reference? There we go. 